In this video tutorial, we will be looking at predator-prey population cycles. So if you recall, population is defined as all the individuals of a single species living in the same area. A predator is an animal that eats other animals, while a prey is an animal that is eaten by other animals. So this predator hunts and eats this prey. Now in today's lesson, we'll be looking at something called a population cycle. A population cycle is defined as the predictable rise and fall of a population over time. So as you can see over here, if we have a graph of population versus time, the population rises and falls, rises and falls, and it's repeated over and over again, and thus it is predictable. In this case, the word cycle means a time period that repeats itself. So this would be the first cycle from this time period to this time period. But then we see the pattern restart again, starting to rise. So this would be called the second cycle. Then once it falls back down, we start to see the rise again. So we say this is the beginning of the third cycle. So the end of each cycle is when the population decreases to the lowest it can get. And the start of each cycle is when it begins to rise back up and finally ends again at the lowest population it can get to. With a predator-prey population cycle, we will see two lines. One line should represent the predators, and one line should represent the prey. But how do we know which one is which? What I would like you to do at this point is press pause and try to guess, based on the information provided here, which one, the blue line or the red line, represents the predator, and which one represents the prey. When you're done, press play, and we'll take it up together. All right, so from previous lessons, you would have known that lower trophic levels represent the prey, all right? They are the ones that are getting eaten, whereas the ones at higher trophic levels tend to be predators, the ones that, well, eat the ones at lower levels. So as such, you must have, typically, more prey in order to support the predators. You can't have 500 eagles eating only one fish. More likely, you have 500 fish supporting one eagle. So the blue line represents the prey because there are more of them to support the red line, which would be the predator, since there are less of them. Another way to determine which line represents which is to remember this phrase, predator follows prey. Just like the wolf follows the deer, you'll never see the deer following the wolf. Well, the wolf population or the predator population will always follow the deer population, or in this case, the prey population. So what I mean is, when the prey population increases, there's now more food for the predators. So over here, we see the prey population increasing, so maybe the deer population, as an example, is increasing. Well, if there's more deer, then there's more wolves to support it. However, once you have too many wolves, they're overhunting the deer, and so the deer population will decrease. So more predators, more prey get eaten. It means there's less prey. If you have less prey, then there's less food for the predators. And so they'll start to starve or they'll start to leave the area. And so the predator population will decrease as well. So as we see the prey population decrease, 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 well, so does the predator population. It too will decrease. Now we have very few predators. So there's not a lot of wolves in the area. If there's not a lot of wolves hunting the deer, the deer can increase their population. But again, once there's a lot of deer, a lot of food for the wolves, the wolf population can also increase as well, and then the cycle starts anew. When there's too many predators, there's overhunting, the deer population decreases. When there's not a lot of food, the wolf population will also decrease. And so the prey is always followed by the predator afterwards. Well, typically anyway. There will always be exceptions to the rule uh, where some random event may cause the uh, predator and prey relationship to be disrupted. Now, looking at the predator-prey population curve, we can get some additional information about this ecosystem. For instance, the carrying capacity. If you recall, carrying capacity is defined as the maximum population that is sustainable by the environment. So in this case, sustainable means how much the environment can support without ever dying out permanently. All right? Sure, there will be some increases and decreases in the population over time, but overall, this population is stable. It will be sustained uh, ongoing forever so long as the conditions don't change. 
So usually you can estimate the carrying capacity for a particular population by looking at how high it can get versus how low it can get. And then somewhere in the middle, you will likely find its carrying capacity. So this would represent roughly how many deer can be supported by this particular environment. Yes, the population increases too high past it, so then it has to go back down. Once it goes back down, now we can afford to add more deer to it. So it goes back up and it just goes back and forth, back and forth. Similarly, the wolf population will also fluctuate up and down, uh, above and below its carrying capacity, just hovering around the carrying capacity for the wolf population in this ecosystem. So remember, this is just a rough estimate of what the carrying capacity is likely to be for each species. Just take the highs and lows, and it's usually somewhere in the middle. All right, so what I want you to do now is open your Google Sheets file entitled Hair versus Lynx. So in the assignment folder, click on the file. Again, you won't be able to do much here, so you're going to click on the three dots and choose Open in a New Window. Now I can choose Open with Google Sheets. And here we have some uh, data from the Hudson Bay Company regarding year versus the snowshoe hare population in the thousands and the Canada lynx population in the thousands. So we're going to create a predator prey population graph using this data. What I want you to do is click on the year, drag the whole thing over, and select and highlight all the data. Let go. And then you're going to click Insert and Chart. Once your graph has been generated, I like to keep it in a separate uh, sheet. So move to own sheet. That way I have it uh, more expanded and easier to uh, edit. All right, so let's clean things up. I'm going to first rename this. Oops, graph of the hair versus the links. Then I'm going to go up here and change the title to figure 1.0 snowshoe hair population versus the Canada lynx population. Now you notice the y-axis is not properly labeled. So I'm going to go click on the chart title axis settings over here. Click on this and choose the vertical axis title. That allows me to type it in and I will call it population in thousands and you'll see it appear on the left hand side now. Now I prefer to put the legend at the bottom. I'm going to go back to the settings side here and choose legend. And then instead of auto, I'm going to say I want it labeled at the bottom. But you can choose whatever you want, whatever suits your preferences. All right, so there you have it. You now have a population graph for your predator versus prey. You can see the different cycles that are going through them. Blue, of course, represents the snowshoe hare population in the thousands, uh, while red represents the Canada lynx population in the thousands. You can now go back to your PDF and answer all the questions using the uh, graph that you just created. And that's pretty much it. So that concludes our lesson on population curves for the predator-prey relationship. If you have any questions, please ask your teacher.